Today, I am going to explain a supernatural horror film called Hellraiser. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Roland Voigt is a wealthy businessman who seems like a typical middle-aged man to most but hides a dark secret. One day, he makes his assistant Serena go to a secluded place and receive a puzzle box. The naive girl doesn't know how dangerous the thing is and holds it the entire day. In the evening, she attends Voigt's house party and meets a prostitute named Joey. They talk for a while before Serena asks him to go to the part of the house that has double doors. She has been ordered to do so by her boss but has no idea why. Joey enters the deep corners of the mansion until he finally reaches the room with double doors and a high ceiling. In the middle is a platform that holds the puzzle. Voigt appears out of the dark and asks Joey to solve the puzzle, claiming that he will be rewarded for it. The guy wants to leave at this point, thinking that the situation is too strange, but he is intimidated into staying. It surprises him that the puzzle is not too difficult to solve. When he fits the final piece, a blade pops out and impales his palm. A horrified Joey yells in pain, unaware of what comes next. He's used to getting screwed, but not like this. Seconds later, a portal opens, from which chains fly out and hook themselves into Joey's skin. He screams one last time before he is ripped apart. Voigt simply watches the incident, having known what the puzzle is capable of. He looks at the portal, addressing Leviathan, the entity that rules over hell. The scene abruptly changes to six years later. Riley is a recovering addict who lives with her brother Matt, his boyfriend Colin, and their roommate Nora. One afternoon, she is in her room having fun with her boyfriend Trevor. The other people in the house can hear them in the kitchen, which makes things awkward. Trevor leaves right after, making Matt believe he is not good for Riley, and being able to hear his sister like that is not good for Matt. He talks to his sister, and the two get into an argument about him being controlling. After the fight, Riley goes to Trevor's place and starts smoking. We find out that she has been lying to her brother about being sober. Trevor asks Riley to come with him to an abandoned house. He delivered a box to the house a few days ago, and knows that it has something valuable inside. Riley agrees, and the two break into the house in the next hour. When they finally get their hands on the box and open it, it, they find a cube puzzle inside. Unaware of the dangers it will bring, Riley takes the puzzle home. Later, she gets into a fight with her brother when he finds out she lied about being sober. Matt, enraged by her carelessness, asks her to get out of his house. In a fit of rage, Riley takes the puzzle, packs her bags, and leaves. She goes to a playground and takes edibles to escape reality. Then, she starts playing around with the puzzle, accidentally solving it. A blade springs out but misses her hand. Riley is soon bothered by an eerie feeling. She senses someone watching her, and as if on cue, a silhouette is seen in the dark. The entity's name is Pinhead, and he is a worker from hell, whose job is to rip out the souls of people who solve the puzzle. However, since the puzzle blade missed Riley's hand, he cannot take her. Instead, he asks for two more souls in her place, and makes her chest bleed. Somewhere else, Matt wakes up from a nightmare and feels bad for yelling at Riley. He quickly runs outside to look for her, and finds her passed out on the playground. Ground. Trying to help her up, he holds the box and accidentally cuts himself. Not realizing that he is now on Pinhead's hit list, he takes Riley to a nearby bathroom. Suddenly, blood starts flowing from the sink, hinting at Pinhead's arrival. A loud scream wakes Riley up, but when she enters the bathroom, her brother is already gone. She panics and immediately calls 911, but since Matt disappeared entirely, they do not have much to work with. They simply bring a frantic Riley back home and ask her to issue a missing report. The next morning, Colin asks Riley where Matt went, but she cannot give him an answer for fear of sounding insane. They get into an argument because Colin thinks Riley isn't trying to help the police because of the fight she had with Matt. When the conversation starts getting overwhelming, she storms out and goes to Trevor for comfort. They spend some time together, which makes Riley forget about her problems momentarily. However, she is soon haunted by the visions of Cenobites, the creatures from hell who are slaves to Pinhead. The next morning, she she asks Trevor to help her figure out the secret of the puzzle. She is sure that her brother's disappearance has 
something to do with it because Pinhead was holding the puzzle while torturing her last night. Trevor helps her find the owner of the abandoned house, and it turns out to be none other than Serena, the assistant who received the puzzle at the beginning of the film. They find her in a health center dying from a lung disease. Serena tells the couple to forget Matt and leave the puzzle with her. She also tells them about her billionaire boss, Voight, who is killed because of his obsession with the puzzle. Riley insists Serena tell her more about the puzzle, but she refuses. Instead, she tries to snatch the puzzle out of her hands and is cut in the process. Serena accepts her fate and claims that she did this to herself. Later, she sees Cenobites in a room who follow her around the health center, eventually leading her to her doom. Upon reaching home, Riley looks up Voight's name on the internet and finds articles about him being an occult artifact collector. This guy puts Nick Cage to shame. She also sees that he was linked with several mysterious disappearances before his own disappearance six years ago. Riley knows that it all relates to the puzzle and wants to go to Voight's last mansion to investigate. Trevor no longer wants to support her, scared of being taken away like Matt and Serena. I'm too high for this shit, dude. Hence, Riley goes to the mansion herself. She breaks in and instantly finds the place spooky. It has huge metal gates that look like they were made for protection from something dangerous. But the answers to Riley's questions are solved when she reaches Voight's study room. It consists of several pictures of Pinhead and the Cenobites. Riley also gets her hands on a diary that explains that every human taken by the Cenobites is mutilated and skinned differently. She learns that the puzzle has six different forms and depending on which form you solve it into, you are tortured by the afterlife entities. It looks as though Voight was after some sick form of immortality that he was trying to attain through the puzzle. After hours of reading, Riley suddenly hears someone whisper her name. She looks around and finds Matt in the hallways. She runs to hug him, but is horrified after finding out that his back has been skinned. She retreats in shock and is caught by Colin, Trevor, and Nora, who have all come to help her. While Nora and Trevor wait outside, Riley explains to Colin what she has learned in the past hours. She claims that if she gets the puzzle to its sixth and final form, she will be granted a wish by the god of hell. She can ask for love, life, knowledge, power, for Furbies to come back into style, or even resurrection. The last way is how she plans to get Matt back. Colin thinks she has lost her mind, which frustrates Riley. She goes to show him the puzzle, only to find out she has dropped it somewhere in the mansion. Outside, Nora is locked in a room because of the house's old mechanical setting. As Trevor tries to get her out, someone else in the same room as her is solving the puzzle. The person uses it to stab Nora and chases her out of the room. A terrified Nora stays on the ground, unaware that since the puzzle hurt her, her doom is near. Colin and Trevor pick her up and run outside while Riley picks up the puzzle and follows. After they leave, we find out the man in the walls is Voight himself. The trio takes Nora outside the mansion to their van. While trying to drive away from the mansion, a sudden force makes them lose their way. Whilst driving in panic, the puzzle starts moving, which throws them into terror. Unknown to the fact that the Cenobites have started their execution, the trio drives in fear, not knowing what the right path is. Nora, on the other hand, finds herself being taken by the Cenobites, where she ultimately meets her death through Pinhead. Riley sees Pinhead's reflection in the mirror and grasps the situation. Consequently, their van crashes and they come out to find Nora is nowhere to be seen. While on their way back, Riley meets Pinhead, who offers Matt's resurrection for two more sacrifices, which she refuses. Momentarily caught in the conversation, Riley gets stabbed and is now marked. Pinhead then tells her it's either her own life or two others. Somehow, the group finds their way back to the mansion when a Cenobite follows them. Failing to catch up with the other two, Colin falls down with the fear of what is before him. However, the Cenobite leaves him for the now marked Riley. In the process, the Cenobite injures Trevor, but Riley, refusing to give up any of the other two as sacrifice, solves the puzzle and stabs the Cenobite, who then meets his death. Finally, the three make it back to the mansion. However, their safety is still not ensured, with many Cenobites making their way towards them. Just then, Riley locks the metal doors. Upon 
Upon realizing the framework design surrounding the whole mansion keeps the Cenobites out, leaving an injured Trevor to rest, Colin and Riley set off alone to find some solution. Now, the alone and resting Trevor gets a visitor who is revealed to be Voight. It is further disclosed that Trevor was voice lackey and has been working to find people to sacrifice to the box, including Riley. The metal's crackling reveals a contraption attached to Voight that twists and leaves him in pain. He then presses on Trevor's wounds and tells him to speed up the process and offers sacrifices to get his reward as he has no more patience left. In order to trap a Cenobite, Riley and Colin move Trevor to control the switch. Then, Riley offers herself to Pinhead, but is actually using herself as bait to lure in and trap a Cenobite. They become successful in trapping one, but unfortunately, Riley drops the artifact during the process. While everyone is on different sides of the metal cage, Colin goes to find it but fails, as Void is faster in doing so, and stabs Colin instantly. Shocked at the existence of Void, Riley informs Trevor, but he is unvexed by it. Unvexed, nice. Our writer has dope words today. Riley then learns about everything that Trevor did for Voight and how he was with her in hopes of sacrificing her. She also learns that Voight was able to get the sixth solved puzzle six years ago and was granted a wish by the god of hell. He wanted a new pleasure sensation that got him the contraption attached to his body. This is when she finds out that the truth behind any reward offered by the Cenobites is pain. Sadomasochist gang rise up as the puzzle reconfigures itself like every other time. The portal opens for yet another sacrifice, and on Voight's command, Trevor opens the gates, letting the Cenobites in. Riley pleads with Colin to run, which he does, but is followed by Cenobites. Taking the opportunity, Voight locks all the gates, trapping the Cenobites, demanding Leviathan to set him free from the gift. Just as Leviathan appears in the sky, Voight fails to keep a check on Riley, who then takes the box, unlocks the door, and goes to find Colin. With the tables turned, Voight now gets on his knees and asks Pinhead to just let him die so he doesn't have to suffer anymore. Trapped and almost ready to be mutilated, Colin screams in pain. Riley reaches the scene and offers the Cenobite another sacrifice in place of Colin. Riley goes to Trevor, who is initially sent by Voight to not let Colin escape, and stabs him. The Cenobite instantly releases Colin and captures Trevor, who is mutilated right then and there. Riley is successful in saving Colin from the torture. Meanwhile, Void is asking Pinhead for anything but the gift. Being true to her grounds, she informs him that no gift could be ungiven. However, she tells him that exchange was possible and furthermore, admits that they were wrong about him, that he never sought sensation, and that everything he did for pleasure was for power. Void immediately chooses to exchange his gift for power. Pinhead then steps back and lets Leviathan give him his final salvation. Unquestionably, the metal contraption comes off his body and his wounds heal. It does not last long, however, as a long chain comes crashing through the ceiling and pierces through him and lifts him away. Decidedly, everything calms down and Riley goes to the Cenobites who offer her a reward for completing all the sacrifices. Her brother Matt calls to her as they offer to resurrect him, but she chooses not to, as she has already learned from Void how everything is twisted. This must be how the Halo TV show came to light. She tells them that she accepts his death. The Cenobites notify her that she has chosen lamentation as a gift. By choosing to live with the guilt for all the sacrifices she made, she leaves the artifact on the floor, which reconfigures itself with the disappearance of the Cenobites. Riley and Colin return to the van, where Colin asks her if she made the right decision, but Riley stays naked. I mean silent, shit, I read ahead there. Riley stays silent. In the last scene, Voight wakes up naked hairless and trapped. He then gets brutally transformed into a Cenobite, receiving the gift of power that he truly desired. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.